So now finally learn how Power Query give all the outputs, how Power Query works, what is the language behind it. So though we don't have to learn this language, but we should know which language is used by Power Query to perform all the actions. So the name of the language is M language. We also call it as M language. Now you can see this one of the example here. Let will give you this let will allow us to give input, whereas in is the final output. Now let me show you this in Power BI. If we go to Power BI in Power Query Editor, we can see Advanced Editor. Now use of this Advanced Editor is to show the details. Whenever we add any of these cleaning and transformation steps, then all those functions will be used by Power Query. And even here also, we can say this is the name of the function table dot rename columns. It's a good idea to learn this language after learning Power BI well. It's not that we don't have to learn, it will add value. But this is not the beginner step. We can do it later. At this point of time, let me just quickly show you advanced editor. An advanced editor will show you all the steps which were applied during cleaning and transformations. And we don't have to edit this. So whatever we did, for example, we promoted headers and for promoting headers, this was the function which is being used and then even data type was also corrected. So let will allow us to get the input and the final output is in. Let input in final output. So we can close this. We, we should not mess up this code because in case you will edit this, if you don't know how to correct that, then you will struggle and you will see here error. But you should know which language. It, this is called as meshup language. And the last step you can see here, last step is renamed column, we renamed column. And we can see this is the function name which is being used. So do not even try to edit this as well till the time you're not very comfortable with it, this M language. Now, once we have update all the cleaning and transformation steps, now we are ready to load this data in Power BI Desktop for visualization. Now, before visualization, we need to learn one important concept and that's data modeling. So, let's quickly load this data. And once we load this data, this data will be loaded in Power BI Desktop for visualization. And once we load this data, let me introduce these three views available. And then I will introduce data modeling concept. So this, when we hover our mouse, this is called as report view. This is called as table view. Older name, if you are using older version of Power BI, then you, you might see this as data view. Older name was data view, but now Microsoft has renamed it. New name is table view. And the last one, I'm just hovering my mouse. When we hover our mouse, we can say the last one is model view. So what is the use of these different options, views given? We create a report in report view. We can see detail of our table. Suppose we want to see what's there in customer table, what's there in date table. We can see all those tables here. We can choose that table and table view will allow us to see detail of that table. Now we can also go to model view. Model view will allow you to see all the tables. These are all independent tables and we can see some mapping here. We can collapse these. We can expand this. We will talk about this later. We'll learn about properties pane later. Let's just collapse it for the time being. And these are the all tables. And these tables can be resized if we want. If we are not able to see all the table name or all the tables, then we can use this fit to page. And once we fit, uh, once we click on fit to page, we'll see all the table name. We can also use this zoom to scroll to make it smaller or bigger. We can also move these tables if we want to. Let's move all the tables. There is no relationship between date and uh, other tables. And we'll talk about that later, that why there is no relationship. Let's just move all the tables. Now, these are the tables. And there is some linkages. 
so why we are seeing these linkages we have not created any linkages or something then why we are seeing these linkages so this is called as relationship which is auto detected by power bi we have not created this relationship power bi has auto detected this relationship now let me show you what is the power of these relationship and what is data modeling Now, data modeling is actually a simple concept: building relationship between independent people. Data modeling includes the process of defining relationships between tables in our data model. Now, if there is no relationship, those are independent tables. But if we create these relationship between these independent tables, one table, one worksheet. If you remember, we are using your Excel as a data source, and we are we have selected so many tables. Each table has some data, and there are some keys. So there are some IDs which is being used. Now, data modeling is the heart of Power BI report. If something goes wrong here, then we will get unexpected result. So, because there is only auto detect relationship feature given in Power BI, that's why. This relationship is being built now. Let me delete this relationship because I want to show you why even we need these relationships. So let me delete this relationship between sales details table and product table. I'm also going to delete relationship between customer table and sales detail. So before we understand what is data modeling and why this is important. Let's quickly understand why even we need this concept. So I'm going to create some visuals. Point is not to explain at this point of time how to create visuals. Point is just to show you when we create a visual, then how these relationships matter. So let me create this simple table in a dedicated module. We will learn how to create these visuals. Right now, I'm just showing you why even we need those relationships. So let me create this one table wherein I'm adding market. We can select this box, and then I'm going to add your sales. If suppose we are not sure where is sales, we can use the search bar. So search bar will allow us to search. So let me add total sales, which is given in our sales table. So sales is given here, and let's select this. We can either check this box or we can also drag it. Size of this font is too small, so let me make it bigger for better visibility. And now we can see everything seems okay in this one table. So this is our table one. Let me create few more tables. We can copy paste the same visual and let me replace market. And I'm going to add here. Let's say category. So let me add category. This is our second table. So this is showing category-wise sales. Let us create one more visual wherein we are going to show gender-wise sales. This is going to be our third table. We will replace category with gender, and you will find some issue here. You might have already observed the issue. So what is the issue? Before you figure out the issue, let me even show you the overall sales. So these are three tables, and let me add the overall sales. So overall sales is. Let's quickly find overall sales, and our total sales is thirteen million. Let me change unit. So let's say none, so that we can compare these numbers. Now, in case there is no unit, this is the overall sales. Now, if this is the overall sales, then why we are seeing same numbers overall sales? This market-wise sales visual, this table is showing us correct answer. We expected that we should get market-wise sales, and we are getting market-wise sales. But here, category-wise sales, we are not getting correct answer. Here we can see overall sales is thirteen million. But here, when we see these numbers category-wise, we expected that when we drag, we should get category-wise sales, but we are not getting that. Instead, we are getting overall sales. 
And the same problem we can see here as well in gender by sales table. We can see that sales is same for female gender and male gender. Why so? Why we are getting correct answer for this and why we are not getting correct answer for this? Let me show you the reason. Reason is it is because market and sales both are coming from same table. We can see sales details is the table name. Market is available in sales detail table and sales column is available in sales details table only. So there is no problem. When data comes from same table, there is no problem. Problem is when we select fill from different table. Now I've selected this table. We can see that sales is coming from sales detail table, whereas this category is coming from product table. These are two different tables. So when we choose filled from two different tables and when there is no relationship, now the reason, what is the reason here? Reason is because there is no relationship between product table and sales table. This is coming from same table. So there is no problem. We are getting correct answer. But because these two fields are coming from two different table and there is no relationship. This is why we are getting same numbers everywhere. Similarly, gender is coming from customer table and sales is coming from our sales table. So, when there is no relationship, we will see same numbers everywhere. Even if we create a column chart, let me create a column chart or a bar chart, we will see same everywhere, we will see same bar or same column. Why we see this? It is because there is no relationship. So how to build this relationship? Though Power BI will automatically detect the relationship. But in case Power BI is not able to detect that relationship, even we can also create. Because we have already deleted that, so we have to create it. Now how to create relationship? Creating relationship is easy. We just need to find the common keys between the tables. There has to be a common information. There has to be a common ID or key. Then only we can build relationship, else we can't. So let's just drag and drop. How to build relationship? To build relationship, first of all, let's just find common key, customer ID in customer table and sales details, customer ID. So we can see common key here. How to build relationship? By simple drag and drop. Either we can drag customer ID from customer table and drop it here. Let's drag and drop it here. And then we can save this relationship or we can also do vice versa. We can drag this key customer ID in, and we can drop onto customer ID available in customer table. Now, let's go to our report view. We can see problem is fixed. Female gender has generated 6.6 .6 million. Male gender has generated 6.5 million. Overall sales is 13 million. So this table looks okay now. But still we can see the same problem with this table because we have not built any relationship between product table and our sales table. So how to build this relationship? Once again, we need to find a common key. We can see product key in our sales details table and we can also see product key in product table. So just drag and drop, drag key from sales table and drop onto product table and let's just save it. Let's go back to report view and we can see even category wise sales visual is also giving correct answer. So that's the importance of data modeling. That's the importance of these relationship. If there is no relationship, Tables will not filter out. Fills are not filtered out. We will see the same answer everywhere. So there has to be an active relationship between two tables. Then only we can see correct output. So this is basically the herd of Power BI report. If something goes wrong here, then we can expect unexpected result. So this is called model view. This is called data modeling. What is data modeling? Data modeling is building relationship between 
independent tables and there has to be a common key. If there is no common key, we cannot build relationship. Now, it is not necessary that all these tables have to come from same source. Not necessary. These tables can come from different sources. For example, one data source can be Excel. Another data source can be SQL. So, if suppose some data is coming from Excel, another data is coming from any database like SQL. If there is common key between these tables, which is coming from different sources, we can find the common keys and we can build relationship. So that's why Power BI is so powerful because of this data modeling capability. Power BI can allow us to choose fields from different tables, which is not possible in Excel if we are creating pivot table because we can choose fields from only one table. But if we have built this relationship or Power BI has detected this relationship, there are so many tables given here we can choose filled from any of these tables. So this is the benefit of data modeling. This is the use of data modeling concept. And this is the very important concept. Most of the time, we spend our time on cleaning and transformation, power query. This is a very critical task. Second one is data modeling. Now, data modeling has two aspects. One is building relationship, which we are learning right now. And there is another aspect of it, which is calculations. So we'll learn that later. There are more technicalities behind data modeling. We need to first learn those concepts, those technicalities. Then only we will be able to fix some of those issues which we may face when we'll be creating our 